is about uh, criterion of planarity of the graph. And we tell that G is planar. So this, these two guys, these two examples, K5 and K3, is the uh, base, base example. So if, if G is, is planar or not, uh, we can <clears throat> understand it just looking at if it has or if it not has K5 and K3 or some homomorphic graph to, to K5 or K3 as a subgraph of G. So G doesn't have a subgraph homeomorphic to K three three and K five. And by homeomorphic, I mean that, uh, for example, we can um, take take a, a, an edge and then just. Uh, construct additional dots in the middle of this, <coughs> in uh, in the middle of this edge, or so do do this construction like uh, one or <coughs> several times. Okay, so maybe I will I will start with example. So I will give you just some. Uh, I will draw some graphs, and. I will ask you if they are planar or not. So can we have a planar, is there exists a planar embedding of this graph or not? And then we'll, we'll, so I will give you like five minutes and then we'll discuss how to do it for arbitrary graphs. Okay, so we can look at these three pictures and try to understand is these graphs are planar or not. So I'll give you like, you can ask questions now, we can give you like you know, five minutes to think about it. Maybe I will draw it better. So this is okay.
Uh, these graphs aren't planar. Oh, oh Hello. Hello. Not planar. No. Oh, all the graphs are not planar. Okay, so how yeah. do uh, how do you prove it so far? What 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 is the first one, for example? Uh, first of all, uh, I just tried to make the second graph. Uh, draw it such in a way that uh, it doesn't cut any edges and edges doesn't intersect and I couldn't make that graph and also every branch has like I think it's a uh, homomorphic to k3 k33 the, the second one or the first one the first one mm, as every uh, vertices has three or like three edges, so I don't think so it will be able to make at least the first two. First two are I think not planar. Okay, but but if if you if you want to prove they're not planar, then you need to find the subgraphs that are gonna work to K three or K five. I think for the So I think the first one is planar. Uh, okay, how can you draw it? Uh, so I just use the inequality of because there's a triangulation in the first one. So, and I counted the number of edges to be eight and the number of vertices to be six. So, uh, two times v minus four that is eight, and which is less than or equals to eight. So, I think it's planar. I just use the inequality is less than or equal to two. Yes, but but two v minus four. Yeah, but he will have triangles. So this graph contains uh, cycles of length three. So uh, the inequality. Uh, so the. Uh, so this inequality uh, is is not a criterion of planarity. Okay, let's try to maybe draw the. So what if you if you look at the first picture, then how it is uh, connected? We have nine nine edges, right? So we have like here here we can draw it like uh, one triangle, another triangle. And then uh, we have Mm. We can image the corresponding edges. So this will be this one. Uh, so if you number the vertices like one, two, three, four, five, six, and he will have one, five, three. Two for six, then one go to six, two goes to five, uh, two goes to five, and three goes to four. Yeah, but if we change the place, change the place, so then, then I can just draw it like this one. This, yeah. So we can draw an image. We can make a planar orbit of this graph. Okay. Yes, sir. And you can see that each so each vertices uh, has degree three, and it means that it it can in turn contain a graph uh, to k five. So the this this may be not planar only if the graph is isomorph isomorphic to k three three, but it's not isomorphic to k three because it it has the cycles of length three. It's not bipartite graph. So it means that with high probability it will be planar and we can draw a picture. Okay, what about the second one? Uh, so if you if you look at the degrees, then we'll, uh, so we have here degree four, 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 three and three. And again, uh, it is highly unlikely that we have a K5 as a subgraph because K5 has five vertices of uh, degree four 
and he will have only four verses of degree four and two verses for degree three. So it can be not planar only if it if if it contains a subgraph homomorphic to k three three. So either we can find this subgraph or uh, it will be not. Oh, maybe we can draw a picture of, so we can. Uh, we can have a planar embedding. Mm, okay, so let me try the last one. Okay, but what about second one? Do you think it's planar or not? Uh, it's not planar, sir, because sorry, it's planar because um, there's no K five graph, and it can be K three three because of the there are cycles there. Yeah, you but can split but them but into. We have, so we have additional edges because some of some of them are degree four, but maybe there is a subgraph uh, is a morph to k three. Oh, sir, but there are no um, three independent vertices, so I don't think it's possible that there's a K three three graph. Where where do you see independent vertices here? So, uh, there are no three independent vertices in this graph. The independent set of the graph is two. But we can. So, but I, but I already told you that we can we cannot we can lose some edges because we have additional edges in the graph cases three all all verses has degree three here we have four mm -hmm. verses degree four so for example we can uh draw draw out uh so forget about two edges and maybe if we cut the two edges out then we'll have the key the graph cases three exactly oh, okay Um, sir, if we remove um, the uh, if we remove the if we remove the um, edge, one of the straight edge on the right, 
Uh, like, so can we number the vertices first? So okay. that it's easier to say. Uh, okay. Let's do some numeration. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Yes, yeah, so if we remove the edge three, five, and. So vertical edges. Three, five, and. I was thinking. Two five, three five, and two five. Three five and two five, but we will we will have one vertex of, of degree two. So if you, okay. if you if you if you have cut the five, you need to so. Um, so if you have we have exactly two vertex of degree three here, so, uh, the mm -hmm. the number one and the number four. And it means that if we if it happen if if you have a chance. That it 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 will be bipartite, so it will be cases three. Then we have yeah. one, um, so one part will contains the vertices two for six, and the other one other one must contains um, one three five. So let's draw these vertices here. So it will be one three five, two for six, and look at how what are our our edges so we have one one two one four one six uh two connected with uh one six five and three uh three connected with two four five two four five and six uh three connected with two four five and six Co-connected with one, three, and five, and five connected with two, three, four, and six. Two, three, four, and six. Okay. Okay. We we can see from this picture that if we uh, forget about two, six, and three, five, we get exactly case three here. So uh, this graph contains a a subgraph isomorphic to case three, and so it's not a plan, it's not planar graph. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, so you can you can continue and think about last picture. Is it is this graph plain or not? So I can again number all the words here. Like one. Two, three. So, so the second graph is not planar. Sorry. So, is the second graph planar or not? Not. No. 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 Yeah. So, first is planar. We can have a planar embedding. For the second one, we have a subgraph. Uh, is a more case to three, and case three is not a planar. So, th this, this, this is the same graph, and this graph contains. Yeah, that three. from two to five, it overlaps the edges. Then it is not planar. Mm -hmm. okay. So if we get rid of the two edges of two six and three five, we get the graph mm -hmm. exactly case to three graph, and it's not a planar. Mm -hmm. So this graph is, is uh, also not a planar graph. Okay.
sir, I think the last one is not planar. Why? Mm. So, if we check the degrees of all the vertices, okay. um, the, the degree of vertex 2 is 4. Yes. The degree of vertex 4 is 5. The degree of vertex 5 is 4. The degree of vertex 6 is 4. The degree of vertex 7 is 2. And the degree of vertex 3 is 5. OK. So if we forget about the, if we look at, so we can see that there are five vertices which degree greater than or equals to four. And which means we can have a K5 subgraph. Yeah, but we need to shake it. So because it, it, it's not, it is not obvious, it, it, it is not true that if all the vertices are of degree five and four, then it contains the K5 inside this graph. So we can just, we just need to find the uh, actual subgraph here. But okay, for first one, we can uh, forget about vertices one and seven because uh, yes. they, they, so we can just um, uh, look at the subgraph. So we, we can draw a graph. graph where we can get rid of the first and seven because they don't mean anything. And here we can... Um, and then we can try to... Uh, so there's an edge from five to six also. Yeah, yeah. And, and then we can just look at what edges do we have in our graph. So two is connected with three, four, five, and six. Our classes are canceled. Hold on, my, my mute your mic. three connected to this two four five and six six connected to the five and four and five connected to four. okay so we just uh so if you get rid of the one and seven and then look at what edges do we have uh, between uh, two three four five and six we'll see that we have exactly graph k5 here so it's it's also not planar graph. Okay, let's continue. What can we? So we just we just know uh, the exact exact criterion of planarity. What is graph is planar or not? Uh, what is the the good properties of the planar graphs? Let's look at the colorings. You already are familiar with the concepts of the chromatic number of graph. I will just uh, remind you that um, sorry. so the HOG is minimal number of colors uh, such that we can uh, we can have the we can color, color, color the vertices uh, such that so, uh, so it, uh, the adjusted, adjusted vertices will have the different colors can we can we say something about the chromatic number of the planar graph first of all we can prove the following lemma so if 
if g is planar, then there exists a vertices vertices in g of degree not greater than five. And um, it is not very hard to see because if if for all vertices the degree is six or greater, then if we uh, uh, what we can look at all the edges in our graph, and then if we if we multiply gates of edges by two, it will be exactly the sum of all uh, degrees in our graph, and this is will be less than six times number of vertices, and this will be oh, maybe I will write the edges with a big letter as I do in, in the our statement. But we already proved that number of edges is not greater than 3 v minus 6. And here we'll have that number of edges is greater than c times v. But here is the contradiction. Because we already proved that number of edges is not greater than 3 v minus 6. And if all verses has the degree six or greater, then we will have that number of edges must be greater than three number of vertices. Uh, sir, all trees are planar graphs, right? Yes, of course. Yeah, so, so, so what about K1, K17, for example? Uh, K17, for example. K17? If, yes. If every tree has, has a vertices of degree exactly one. So is this is true for the slam it holds for the full trees. Mm -hmm. So what about like the star? The star with um... yeah. What if if you look if you look stars, then we have all vertices of degree one except one vertice. But I I state that there exists a vertice that have uh, lower uh, that has small mm. small small degree. Okay, so just one is enough. Yes, it's just one is enough. Okay. Just one is enough. Okay. From this, I can state that. Then, if G is planar, then the chrom chromatic number of G is not greater than six. Um, maybe, so maybe you can do it yourself. So, how, so if if I know that there is a vertex, is that if G is planar, then there is vertices of degree not greater than five, then of course I can color it in six colors. It, it can be colored in six colors. So it's, it's, uh, it's not very hard to see because it, the idea is, is and the same because so if, if 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 we have a vertex of degree not greater than five, then this vertex can be colored because we have only five. Uh, uh, so we can use only five colors coloring the adjust just just uh, ver, ver, uh, vertices to this V, and so we can find the color for this vertex, this uh, V. And so if if you do this for this guy, then we can forget about him and prove it by induction. Prove by induction on number of vertices. So of course, of course if we have one vertice, then chromatic number is equal to one, then we can, we can have like just one color. But if we prove it for, for uh, from V to V plus one, so if you have plain graph, then there, there is a verse of degree not greater than five. Then if we forget about this vertices, then this graph is also planar. 
because if we if we get rid of some verses and uh, if if we can write if we can uh, if we have a plenary burden for the G's then we have of course a plenary burden for the G's except one verses one words and the graph is planar. Uh, then the chromatic number of this graph is not greater than six, and then we just look at this uh, and this V, and look at the colors that we have here. So we have maximal five types of colors because V is the degree of V is not greater than five. So we have five or lesser colors, and then we can just use the uh, the six color to choose the color for the uh, V. Okay, but uh, we can prove uh, maybe a little, a little harder proposition that for planar graph, the chromatic number is is not greater than five. Let's prove that. So again, of course, we have. So we just we just prove that chromatic number is uh, not greater than six. So if we have uh, proof again is by induction, uh, again by the number of vertices. If vertices is one, then chromatic number is one. For Suppose we prove it for the number of vertices v, we prove it for vertices v plus one. So if we have if we have a vertice of degree not greater than four, then we can use the same idea as the previous proposition. Just take this vertices, forget about it, color the other graph in five colors, then add these vertices again, and uh, it it connected only with four four other vertices and then if we have four colors so we get we have four colors used for these vertices and then we just use the fifth to our vertices v so the the problem will be only if we can color color it so Problem will happen only if the degree of v is equal to five. So we have the vertices, the vertices v, and it is connected with exactly five vertices, and these five vertices are colored uh, in the they have different different colors here. So exactly, we have. Uh, five different types of color. And uh, here I, I, need, I need to find another way of coloring such that we can use only four colors instead of five. And then we can color this fifth fifth vertex. Fifth vertex of, uh, so we can find the color for V. So we can re, uh, recolor our vertex, our graph, so, such that shows that chromatic number is not greater than five. So let's look at this. Uh, so we 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 uh, need need to use the more so most strictly use the property of planarity of our graph. For example, let's look at the, um, for example, orange one, the orange words. Uh, we have 
uh, here some So he, we have here some complex uh, structure of the graph here for, for each of these vertices. So what what if uh, what happens if we can, so if if we can for example uh, recolor the orange vertices into other color for example uh, blue color. Then, if, if, if we can draw it here, then of course we can choose the orange for the uh, vertex V. Uh, that means that for each of these five vertices, we cannot have, we, we cannot use other color, we just, we just cannot change uh, other color for, uh, this, uh, for this vertex. It means that they connected to other vertices that, that colored in the all, all five possible colors. So for example, uh, if, if we use the idea, then we look at orange, orange vertices must connect it with some blue one. And it means it, uh, this blue one connected to orange one so it, and so on. So if you, um, so let's look only on the, uh, for example, the orange and the blue ones. If this path of the orange, blue, orange, blue is not connected with the, with the vertices, with, with the vertices, with, uh, maybe I will just try to do something. So if we have, um, if, if we not have paths between vertices one and three, then I can just change all blue color, all uh, blue vertices on the orange ones and the orange and the blue ones. So change color of them, and it means that the vertex one will be colored as the, as the blue one. And then I can choose the orange for the V. So if one and three are not connected, then uh, I can uh, uh, not using V. So I can choose, I can change uh, So if we have here some uh, different um, connected, different connected subgraphs, then I can just use the connected part that contains the vertices one, and then change in this part, only in this part, blue and orange color, and then we have color to one, the vertices one in the blue, and so I can choose the orange for the V. What if they connected? We can uh, tell the same about four, two and fourth one. So if two or four are not connected, by green and yellow, then I can change uh, green and yellow. So what do you mean by connection? By connection, I mean that I have the path between one and three such that uh, this path contains contains only orange and blue color. Because if if it so if if we have not such path, then we can change the the color in this one and. Here, if we have the same, the same true for the two and four. So if we have, if we have, uh, if, if there is no pass between two and four with uh, changing colors, uh, 
then I can just divide them. And for example, in uh, in all all the paths starting from uh, the vertex number two and contains only uh, green and yellow, and change green and yellow places. And if we, if we, if it changes two colors to each other, then again we have the uh, uh, the normal normal coloring. But now we can change the uh, vert the color of the number v. So I stated that. Uh, if I if I can do either of these two options, then I have uh, path orange, orange, blue path between between one and three, and green yellow, green yellow path between two and four. But it can be happen if, if we have the planar graph because uh, I, I have just like uh, two, so uh, I will have two faces that are intersecting to each other. And so I'll, I'll exactly have uh, the intersection and this intersection cannot be uh, colored blue and yellow or blue green or blue green or orange green or orange yellow. So what either one of this is cannot be true. So I can just, so for example, if we have paths between one and three, then we cannot have a path between two and four, and then I can I can color, uh, so I can just look at, for example, this uh, this area and change all colors, green and yellow in this area, and then it will be okay. Uh, do you understand, do you have any questions? What happened here? Um, sir, if there is no path between any of the edges, we can just color the map in three colors, right? Uh, sorry. So if if, like, if so, I, I said that if we have the path between one and three with uh, uh, so the, 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 there will be a changing of the colors of orange. So orange blue path between one and three, then I can just write the some area and change. Uh, the green and yellow in this area. And after that, the number two vertices will be yellow, and then I can take the green for the V. But what is the question about? The question is about if there are no paths between any of the edges, there are no paths, okay? Yeah. If there are no paths, yes. then the map can be colored in three colors. Is, is yeah, maybe, right? or maybe two, yeah. If, if we have no paths between one, two, one, two, three, and so on, then we can color them at one color, for example, orange, and then take the second color for the V. For the center, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course if, we, if we have no pass at all, so for example, we consider a tree. The tree can be colored in, in two colors. Okay. But the problem is that we cannot have, so uh, we cannot have too many paths between the vertices. Again, because we can, we, Cannot we, uh, we have no K5 in our subgraph, and K5 is the example of the graph of uh, chromatic numbers. Uh, uh, so so uh, just yeah, I, prove, I prove that I have five colors, and uh, so uh, maybe it's a little more complicated. But uh, K5 is the example of graph with with have five words, so we need exactly five colors of color to color it, and uh, I just prove that. I, uh, that chromatic number is not greater than five. So we just five we need yeah. five colors here because there is a path between how uh, every edge or between uh, the alternate edges. Um, In this case, we have a path between one and three, right? Yes. Yes. And then there is a path between two and four. Yes. Uh, and. And how about if there is a path between one, two, three, and four? Yeah, it's okay. Uh, I I I um, I use my proof one, three, and two, four because they must be intersecting to each other. Of course, there must be there can be a path. So I I can just draw it here. So there can be a path here, but it 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 uh, doesn't uh, doesn't change it doesn't anything. Matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, I understand. Yeah. So we use the idea that we cannot have a graph 
uh, homework to K5 in our subgraph. So we have, so we, we connected with one, two, three, and four, and one connected to two, and we can, we can connect it using five to the four. So one, one, two, one, three, and two, four can be uh, connected to each other. And that is why uh, we can color any planar graph in the five colors. Okay, this was harder, but uh, the main theorem that I will, I will not prove it uh, now, but if J is planar, then uh, we can have four colors. So we can color, each planar graph can be colored in four colors. But it's a very hard theorem, uh, and the proof was given in like, uh, 1980, and it was proof using uh, computers. So there, there's, there's several, several different cases that we need to consider, and it is what it is what's not so easy to see by people. And this is now as the famous. Mm, map coloring of surface of uh, plane map coloring. Let's talk about it for a couple of minutes. So if if we if we uh, talk about chromatic number of the graph, uh, it connected with the just map, map, map coloring. What map col what what do you mean by map coloring? Uh, it is a uh, Medieval, medieval classic uh, question. So if we have, if we draw a map, for example, we want to, uh, we have a nurse and we want to, we have like some different countries and we want to take a, uh, uh, draw a map such that each country has each own color, but of course we cannot have the two uh, countries that have uh, the same border uh, can be colored in the same color. So the question was how minimal number of the colors can we, uh, can we use to draw, draw a map? Of course, of course, we here we, we we need to give some restrictions. So, for example, each country uh, must contains only um, one face. So we cannot have uh, one countries have. Uh, so it it, it 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 should be connected, connected, uh, connected area on the plane. Because if if one country has uh, diff, diff, different parts in. Uh, in different par parts of the plane, different different connected uh, parts of the plane, then uh, we can we, we can uh, we can use as much colors as we, so and uh, ten ten thousand colors, and we cannot get less. It is uh, not very hard to see. But what if uh, each country uh, <coughs> is connected connected face? So it will it can it should be connected. How many colors do, do we need to have? And so uh, the same theorem, it means that uh, we need exactly four colors. So four is, so every map that we can draw on the plane uh, can be colored in four colors. And how do we, how, how is it connected to the chromatic number of the graph? We can, I just can draw some picture and explain it. So if you have like some coloring, Uh, 
assume we have some coloring here on the surface. And then I can just uh, do this, the same thing. I, uh, for, from this picture, I will um, find the planar graph that we have uh, with, col with coloring on the vertices. I just take the, take the point in each of the um, face, and then I just connected the faces that have uh, the same border. And then I can, so for this picture, I will give, I will uh, obtain the planar graph when vertices are the faces and vice versa. So uh, here I can, I connect all the faces that are against each other. And then I can, uh, so the, the coloring of this graph means that we can color the map into the four, four colors. Maybe I can write here the word. So um, it calls the dual graph or the reality of, uh, of planar graphs. So uh, again, we have uh, so for each for each face we we, we took a point, and then we can um, connect these points if and only if the faces intersect each other, have the uh, same border, and uh, then from the coloring from the coloring of the faces we have the color of, coloring of the vertices, and so we if it is correct coloring of the vertices, then we have. Uh, um, correct coloring of the faces. And so this is so the same task. So we just we just solve no we just we just not solve this question because we, we prove that we have so we proved that each map on the plane can be colored in five colors. But there is theorem that we can have, we can use just four colors and not five. Okay. Is there any questions? And is it was clear? Maybe I need to repeat. That. Yes, sir. It was clear. Okay. So last topic, considering planar graphs, will be the classification of uh, regular polyhedra. Do you, do you uh, know anything about this? Do you know what what mean what do you mean by regular polyhedron? Regular polyhedron. So if, if we look at the uh, some polyhedrons, for example, cube, uh, 
then we can uh, consider the same concepts as on a planar graph because cubes has vertices, edges, and faces. And if we look closely, for example, for the cube, we have so how many? We have like eight vertices, uh, twelve edges. So four on the top one, four on the below one, down one, and uh, four on the sides. And we have faces up, down, left, right, and um, these two ones. And well, for example, if we have like uh, the drider, the drider, Then we have here four vertices, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six edges, and four faces. And for example, for the octahedron, we can get it just taking the center of the faces of the cube and just uh, connect them and here we have uh, six vertices three oh i'm not doing the right picture here four four and four twelve edges and adverses and you can see that the Euler, Euler, Euler formula holds for these guys too, because we have like here the sum of vertices minus edges plus faces is also equal to equal to two. And uh, this is not just the uh, so. Uh, This means that we have the connection between the polyhedrons and the planar graphs. And the reason of that is just if we, uh, I can, we can, I can explain it two different ways. First of all, if we have like a polyhedron, we can draw it on the sphere. So we can just uh, uh, maybe, maybe um, move some vertices such that it will be uh, drawn on, on the sphere. And then from the sphere, I can um, get the planar graph in the same in the following procedure. I just took uh, one one point of the sphere that are not lies on that are not vertices of this polyhedron, and then I just open this. So I just get uh, this uh, sphere and make it as, as uh, plane. So I I just uh, so I can just draw it on the plane, like you, you, for example, I can draw it like this one. And so I, I will have uh, like the same number of vertices, same number of edges, but one of, of the faces will be an uh, infinite one. It will, it lies outside. And for example, for uh, tetrahedron, 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 I will, I can just uh, three, four, five, and six one will be like here. And uh, so I just can, uh, but, so maybe I can imagine like, then I just smash this. So I just look at the projection of the surface of uh, uh, polyhedron such that the vertices are not coincide to each other. Or oh, maybe, oh, uh, it is the first one and the second one, I just uh, draw it on the sphere, and then I just 
uh, take one one of the point of the sphere and just cut from it. Um, so I just um, um, maybe uh, not the point, just some area about this point, and then I just open this. So I I, I just do it as visible. If I have a small, so I just uh, can draw it on the ball, made made the ball uh, flat, and. Uh, so I can, for, for each polyhedron, I can uh, draw it on the surface, has a planar graph, and so I have the same Euler theorem, and so is this, is this connected, then I will have the uh, same connection between vertices, edges, and faces. And it holds for every polyhedron, so we just prove from Euler formula we get that vertices minus edges plus faces is equal to two for each polyhedron. But what about regular ones? What do you mean by regular? Uh, it means that uh, in each vertices so it 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 it's this graph must be regular so it means that each vertex has the same degree and for for this three guys his vertices has so his each vertex has degree three this vertex has degree three and this each vertex has degree four and uh, each face contains the same number of uh, edges each So maybe I will write this as k regular. Okay, so what uh, what we want to do is to make some attempts to find uh, all regular polyhedrons. Can we just describe them if we know the Euler formula and so that uh, each vertex has uh, exactly key edges and uh, each face contains exactly uh, number L of edges. So uh, I just think, do I need, uh, so uh, these two conditions uh, lie some, there's, there will be some restrictions of the number of vertices, edges, and faces. Let's let's find them for this regular graph. So what means that each face contains exactly, uh, uh, so it's, it's if, if the degree of each vertex is equal to K, then it means that if we multiply k the number of vertices times k, it will be the two number of edges. Uh, if each face contains exactly l edges, it means that if I multiply k the l times f, I will just uh, calculate each edge twice. That it, that it will be the same, okay? So V is 2E over K and F is 2E over L. So if I, if, if I look at the L formula, I will get 
this equal to 2, and this is equal to 2a over k minus a plus 2a over l, and it's equal to 4, or equal to 2. Um, and so here I have like something like e times 2k plus 2l minus 1 is equal to 2. So maybe I will uh, to find all possible k and l. Uh, maybe I need to take some. Oh, there's some question. Uh, how does a sphere ha have edges? Okay, so let me explain it for you. So, for example, so first of all, if I have, for example, a cube, I can drag cube inside the sphere. I can just try to the picture. And then I can, so I just took uh, a point of light in the center of the sphere and, this, and then uh, look at all the rays. And then I would have an image of my cube on the sphere. So I can uh, just look at the, eight points of the sphere, and then I will connect them by uh, using this just on the sphere. And then I will just, so all my edges will be just curves that will be uh, lies on the, um, on the sphere, okay? So if you if if you have any other questions, please ask me now because I, I just don't want to rush and uh, do you understand what I said about how to get uh, uh, how to um, get uh, a planar graph on the polyhedron or is it not clear now? So what does this this formula you wrote? Uh, Well, you, you ask about formula E times two over K plus yes. one over Okay, so I want I want to classify it all regular polyhedron. What regular polyhedron means? It means that I have that each each vertex contains uh, K edges, and uh, each face contains exactly L edges. So, for example, we have the faces are triangles, and in each uh, vertex that's exactly uh, have we have we have five edges in each vertex. Okay. So if we have these restrictions, then we have um, two identities. So we have k times v is equal to 2 times e, and l times f equal to 2 times e. Yes? Yes, sir. OK. So we just, took the, we just take the other formula, and then using these functions, we have now the, uh, this equation. So e times 2 over k plus 2 over l minus 1 is equal to 2. So, so any uh, any polyhedron, any regular polyhedron which satisfies this equation, we can take it as a planar graph. So if if we have a regular polyhedron, then K, L, and E must uh, satisfy this equation. Uh, so yes. Okay. No, for now. But we we cannot we cannot be sure that if we have so uh, we just we don't we don't know. We don't know for sure that if we take E, K, and L such that they satisfy the equations, that there is, exists such regular polyhedron. We, we just want to find all possible K and L, and then mm -hmm. using them, we just we can find all uh, regular polyhedrons. Mm, okay, it's clear, sir. Uh, okay, is there any other questions?
Let's try so. Okay, okay. So what we get from this? So if uh, uh, so first of all we need so e, uh, <clears throat> e is uh, so what 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 we get from this the first one is that two over k plus two over l minus one must be positive. Uh, this means that if we multiply it by k k l then we get the the inequality 2L plus 2K minus KL is uh, positive. And we can write this as L minus 2 times K minus 2 minus 4. No, not this. Uh, 2 minus L times 2 minus K. Um, Yeah, maybe I need to rewrite this. So 2L plus 2K is greater than KL. And And so it is less than four, yeah, from this one. So uh, I just so have I have a restriction of k and l. Is it that k minus two times l minus two is not greater than four? And uh, of course, we uh, if you consider regular polyhedron, that it means that. Uh, each each face mask contains uh, mm, at least at least three edges, so we can have eight faces with two edges. So it means that uh, L is greater than three, and of course each edge uh, so must contains uh, uh, must have exactly a degree at least at least three because we cannot have in polyhedron the vertices that contains only two edges. So the case also greater than three. So from here we have only so how how how, how many options do we have? We have like three three, three four, four three, uh, three five, and five three. So we have only five possible options to K and L. Uh, you can also, uh, so as I said about duality, you can find that we have the dual ones. So three, four, and, and four, three, we can just, uh, so if, if, we, if we look at the regular polyhedron and changes the vertices uh, on the faces and vice versa, then we'll have the dual regular polyhedron. It's uh, happens here. So if, if if you look at the cube and the octahedron, uh, they have the symmetry between uh, vertices and faces. And uh, as I told before, so how how do we get that octahedron? Uh, we just take the center of the faces and then connect them with the edges. And uh, again, if if I if I take the octahedron and uh, took the center of each face of the octahedron, then I will I will get the cube. So they are two to each other, and that means that. So if we have like five types of the regular polyhedron, uh, then we can prove that we have only five regular polyhedrons. Uh, so maybe, maybe you, um, this is a. Um, so all we need to do is just find the number of uh, vertices, edges, and faces. But I think uh, I will just explain it in the beginning of the next lecture. But but mainly we just try to um, find all possible regular polyhedron types. Uh, 
Um, do you understand it? Yes, sir. Okay. So if you if you want to uh, find the classification, so we, we we can check. So for example, if we have like uh, how how do we classify them? So for example, if we have three three, it means that we just start with the initial phase. Uh, so let's try. So we have like uh, one phase with three verses in it, and each in each word. And in each vertex has the degree three. So from these guys, exactly one vertex is left. And uh, also we have, um, here we'll have, uh, so, so we must have here another, another face with three vertices. And uh, then, Yeah, so we, um, uh, yeah, so I, maybe maybe we'll need to use. Uh, okay, so just if we want to write, we just need. So for example, okay, so if maybe I will a little bit. Uh, this is a little bit rush. So I all need to do is look at this equation. E on two k plus two l minus one is equal to two, and so if for example, K and L and three three, it means that two third to third minus one, it will be one third. Then I will have exactly six edges. And from this, I can find uh, the number of the faces and uh, using these equations, I can find that K times V is two E and L times F is to E, it means that we have exactly four words and first phases. And we can do the same for the um, other types of polyhedra. So if we, if we have, uh, if we fix the K and L, then we find E from this equation, and then we'll find V and F. And so we'll, we can classify those possible regular polyhedra. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay. So I think that's all for today. Thank you. Uh, I think then next time, uh, you, you don't, you don't, uh, so we didn't discuss with, with the Professor Dayak, uh, Hamiltonian and Euler graphs, yes? So could you say that again? Uh, Hamiltonian and Euler graphs. No, we didn't discuss that. So. Okay, I think I think we'll we'll start uh, with it in the next lecture. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Bye, sir. Yeah. Bye.